All right, you guys, another week, another chapter. So we are jumping on in now past quadrilaterals and such. We're going back to a familiar, familiar territory of uh, triangles predominantly for this chapter, but all kinds of shapes, all kinds of sizes, literally. Um, we're going to talk about non-rigid transformations and similarity. Uh, and it's really broken into two pieces. The first bit is going to be about similar triangles, and the second bit is going to be uh, about um, changing shapes, bigger, smaller, with dilations. And so that's kind of where we're going with this. Uh, we are starting off with a quick review on proportions with what they are, how they work, and, and how we solve them and such. So in page four of your new packet, you can see all about proportions here. Uh, well, not proportions. Proportions are two ratios. Uh, we're going to talk about ratios first. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities. You can represent it with a colon, A to B, with a slash, like a fraction, A to B, or just literally saying A to B. Uh, you can simplify ratios, and we do so quite a bit. Um, so just to show what that means, though. So we've got a big thing on the side. A music store has 40 trumpets, 39 clarinets, 24 violins, 51 flutes, and 16 trombones in stock. We want to give a simplified ratio to represent each of these things here, uh, using either colons or fractions or the wordage, however you'd like to do it. Uh, so I'll kind of do one of each and then my favorite one for last. So first, we'll do colons, trumpets to violins. Well, it says they have 40 trumpets. See if I can actually write that a little bit better, huh? Um, we have 40 trumpets to violins, we have 24. So a ratio would be 40 to 24, but you can simplify, right? So you wanna fully simplify each ratio. So let's go ahead and do it. Instead of 40 and 24, those are both even numbers. So we can divide them both by two at least. So let's try that. So instead of 40 over 24, let's do, 40 divided by two is 20 and 24 divided by two is 12. Okay, still can simplify, right? We could divide that by two again, but I'll do you one better because I don't feel like doing this forever. Uh, just pick the biggest number you can think of that goes into both of these and divide it by that. So I know that uh, 20 times, I'm sorry, 10 times two is 20. I know that six times two is 12, but is anything bigger than two that goes in? Yes, 20 is four times five. 12 is four times three. So I'm gonna divide both of them by what they have in common by four. Uh, and that's gonna get us 20 divided by four is five. And 12 divided by four is three. So we have a five to three ratio trumpets to violins. It's great. Literally, we have 1.67 times as many trumpets as we do violins, because that's what five divided by three is. All right, next one, we'll do flutes to clarinets. Let's do that one next. So flutes, we have 51 flutes. And clarinets, we have 39 clarinets. I gotta be honest with you. I don't think that simplifies. Um, Oh, 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 actually it does. Wow. So first off, it's a fraction, 51 over 39. So let's do 51 over 39. You think, what do they all have in common? Are they prime numbers? They're not. 51 is divisible by three. And it turns out, so is 39. So you could reduce that, right? 51 divided by three is actually 17. And 39 divided by three is 13. So now, now you're stuck with it though. But this is a 17 to 13 ratio right there. Uh, let's keep it going. Next up, we're gonna do trombones to trumpets. So there are 16 trombones to 40 trumpets. Again, this is not fully simplified. What goes into these numbers? They're both divisible by two. They're both divisible by four. They're both divisible by eight. I don't think they're divisible by 16 though. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide them by eight each. All right, so divide by eight. When I do that, 16 divided by eight is two and 40 divided by eight is five. So it's a two to five ratio, trombones to trumpets. We have more trumpets than trombones, about two and a half times as many actually. And now finally, violins to total instruments. Let's do of kind of violin-y color. Uh, so violins to total instruments. So violins, we have uh, 24 violins, 24 violins. 
um, out of the total instruments, total is going to be the 40 plus the 39 plus the 24 plus the 51 plus the 16 is 170. Now that is definitely divisible by two. So you get 12 over 85. And now I think we're done because 85 is divisible by um, five, but not two and not four and not three. So, and uh, not six, I assume either. Uh, so yeah, we're done with that. So there is a 12 out of 85 right there. So that's how you do ratios, right? Uh, a proportion now, I'm sorry, there's extended ratios that can do three things at once. You'll see that sometimes it's, it's pretty much it. Now, a ratio can be used to solve problems. Just one ratio. For example, we know the ratio of two complementary. We did this, by the way, when we did um, partitioning of line segments where we said like three parts on one side, four parts and there's seven parts total. All right, so here, ratio of two complementary angles is three to seven. How would you do this, right? So we have three parts and seven parts, right? So that's three parts, seven parts. That is 10 parts total, right? Uh, we wanna find the measure of both angles. Now, what does that mean, right? That means that uh, we need to figure out how much each part is. They said they're complementary angles. We know that complementary sums to 90. So if we just take 10 parts, set that equal to 90, you can go ahead and solve that. Uh, you just divide by 10 on each side. You figure out that a part is nine. Therefore, one of the angles is nine times three, that's 20, that's a really bad two, is 27. And the other one is nine times seven, which should be, um, that doesn't seem right. Yeah, 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 63. So one angle is 27 degrees, the other one is 63 degrees, that gives them a three to seven ratio, right? Similarly, you could do it over here. Uh, four to one, they're supplements, so they add to 180, that's five parts total. So if you take five parts, you set that equal to 180, you just have to divide both sides by five. You can get that one part is 180 divided by five, uh, 36, right? So if it's four to one, you do 36 times four, that's 144 degrees is the first angle and 36 degrees is the second angle, you're good to go. Uh, now that's all well and good, but that's not what this chapter is about. This chapter is gonna focus very much where you need to know what a ratio is and you know how to write one like we did there. But solving one ratio is not gonna happen. We're gonna wanna solve a proportion, which is simply an equation that states that two ratios are equal. So you have a ratio on the left side, you'll have a ratio on the right side and you just have some equal, that's it. So you write out a proportion as one fraction equals another fraction, and then you cross multiply. That thing that you learned in algebra that everyone wants to do all the time, cross multiply, cross multiply. Anytime you see a fraction, cross multiply. Here you go. We will cross multiply. All right, and, and, and solve them. So this is the one that your entire practice is gonna be based on. You wanna be able to solve proportions using the cross product property. Here we go. So. One ratio is X minus one over six. The other one is 13 over 19. The question is, what is X? So it's a very simple process. All you have to do is cross multiply. If I can write. So first step is to cross multiply here and here. So that means you get 19 times X minus one. It's on the left, right? On the other side, you get uh, six times 13. All right. So that's it. Uh, on the left, you can distribute 19 times X is 19 X. 19 times one is 19 with a negative, right? So you're good. On the other side, six times 13 is 78. And now you can just go ahead and solve it just like you normally would. You want X all by itself. So you move the 19 over. You get 19 X equals... 97, and now you just hope it's going to be a nice number because we have 19 times X, you got to divide both sides by 19. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be nice, um, but it's 97 over 19 is, uh, mm -hmm. that's it. 
it's not going to get any better than that. Um, but that makes sense because six and 19 were not common to start with. So in saying 97 over 19 might be the best we can do. Uh, 97 seems pretty prime to me. Um, 19 I know is prime, so there's no point in trying to simplify. That's it. It's just going to be 97 over 19 is your final answer. You could give a decimal, 12 point, uh, nope, that's wrong. That would be trying to figure it out. 5.105263158, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that's inaccurate and obnoxious. So just leave it as a fraction because it's ratios, right? So we're, we're good. Um, if there were a case where we'd have to do like 0.5 or 0.25 or maybe 0.2, fine. But if it's a ridiculous number like this, just, just leave it as a fraction. So you guys got some practice to do. You're going to work on some of those practice problems in your packet, all the rest of page five, essentially. Um, so page five in your packet, it is the class kick for today. Nice, um, nice uh, return here from our four-day weekend. Uh, you're working on that. And I'm coming around any questions you might have. So that, that's... Uh, that's it. See you guys.